syllabus statement 1.1.14. This will be on describing the uh, strategies for managing releases and updates. So students should be aware of a variety of ways in which updates and patches are made available and deployed, including automatic updates received on a regular basis online. So basically, um, some software changes are no-brainers, like, and they can be installed uh, normally, but, and some reasons include bug fix, security threat, user requests, and additional features. Some have the automatic update option, but um, most, um, some of them, they might, they're bound to fail, for example, like, um, Java 1.6 to 1.7 caused some Java programs to fail. Whether this is Oracle's fault, it's unclear. Or for example, when Apple changed their um, OS X Lion, um, they broke some applications, especially older games, and um, we're not sure. Uh, what <clears throat> so um, there, are, I'm gonna introduce the different ways of possibly managing. Um, releases and updates so let me introduce you to the first term called um, um, releases and this is when an application or um, system achieves a new version so this usually requires manual installation and makes large changes and improvement let's say from windows 7 to windows 8 there's a second type called updates and this is when you uh, when this is um, smaller changes than releases this usually fixes bugs or add small improvements so for example java 1.7 to 1.8 notice the one is still the same so it's the same release but different update and the third of all is called patches and patches are very very small changes and usually fix bugs usually installed automatically and this is not a version change and does not add any new features so for example if you want to test out a particular update or a patch you can first install it in a virtual box or sandbox so this is a virtual machine that is confined and limited and cannot make permanent changes to the entire computer so this is good when you want to test new applications that's a um, really good method um, so Let's look at the different types of updates. Um, there are game updates, there are Windows updates, um, important updates, recommended updates, and optional updates. <clears throat> so um, some software allows automatic updates, but there are lots of different issues that you have to um, think. How do you know that the update is genuine? So we may trust the do we trust the developer or not? How do you know if it doesn't grant the software extra privileges? Like for example, um, when Xbox installed, I'm not sure if it's Xbox, but um, they require your camera to be on all the time. So, so is that good or not? And a possible solution is that like Android apps have declared the privileges they require and they can update themselves only if they do not require extra privileges. Okay, so we can um, link this specific updating um, philosophy or mindset to um, dynamic or static. And this is known as DLL, Dynamic Linked Library. So DLL is instead of importing um, libraries there they download the new libraries when updating with same interface so dynamic linking can reduce total resource consumptions and it means that bug fixes and updates to, to upgrades to libraries propagate to improve your product without requiring you to ship anything and unlike static I mean, um, unlike dynamic static it's it contains external libraries so it makes the file bigger so for example when you do Java and there's the system import java.util.scanner the import it's um, you have to import the JDK Java developer kit so it's easier to distribute and it may allow faster startup times and it means means that you're, uh, you <clears throat> know the code will run in very limited environments. Thank you for watching and hopefully this has helped you and thanks for um, 
this particular user to um, establish a difference between dynamic and static.